the, the reading of God's Word is going to be from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 to 40. That is Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 to 40. Let us please stand for the reading of the Word of the Lord. And what more shall I say? For time would tell me, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, so that they might rise against a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were, they were stoned, they were sown in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. <laughs> Father, what a difficult thing it is not to receive one of your promises, but what a glorious plan that you have for our life, that you have something better for us waiting in the next life, made ready for us from the foundation of the world. I pray that you speak to our brother, Pastor Montosan, right now, as he is going to communicate to us your truth. I know that he has prepared by your spirit and let us receive your word by your spirit, Lord. Let his word change lives today. I pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Some information 
to show the faithfulness and the courage of our people. It's a bit long, but I will summarize it, that event. The Turks cornered our people who were gathered in the house where there were 46 men. And they spent the night in prayer asking God's grace to drink the bitter cup. Forty-six men were lined up against the wall. Their tormentors, armed to teeth, facing them. Please visualize the picture. They were given alternatives of raising one finger, <laughs> signifying one God and Muhammad is prophet in order to save their lives. They did that, they will be saved. Not one hand raised. No one stood up. They were given another statement. And they were asked to raise three fingers, three fingers for their faith in Holy Trinity, which would mean death. Every one of them raised their three fingers. They were given another chance to recant. No one moved. Within 30 minutes, all 46 men were decapitated. You know, this is what our people faced. This is why we constantly state for our new generation to remain faithful to the faith. You know, they paid a heavy price, very heavy price for that faithfulness. But God will remove them in eternity. In the chapter that was read by our brother Hebrews, the whole list of men who faced incredible odds for God. It is of men who never believed that God was on the side of a big battalion and were willing to take tremendous and even terrifying risks for him, for the Lord Almighty. It is of men who cheerfully and courageously and confidently accepted God-given tasks which on human terms was impossible. They were men who never were afraid to stand alone and face immense odds for the sake of their loyalty to God. And this is why we are proud Armenians that our people demonstrated that loyalty to God and to Christ Jesus. And they paid a very dear price. The honor roll of history is of men who chose to be in God's minority rather than with Earth's majority. They had faith in God. That is to say, faith lays hold of what is promised and therefore hoped for and something real, solid thought, as yet not seen. They had God-pleasing faith. Faith is a steady <coughs> conviction. That is, God is true to his word and promises. Confident of the future. Faith is a spiritual perception. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrew 11, 6. Faith which stands the perplexity of life, even unbelievable circumstances, despite all that, there's confidence in the Lord God Almighty. During an earthquake years ago, the inhabitants of a small village were generally much alarmed 
scared, afraid of the earthquake. To their surprise, however, they just wondered at the calmness and apparent joy of an elderly lady who they all knew. And they said, Mother, are you not afraid? Earthquake, how come you're not afraid? You're not afraid. She said, no, no. I rejoice to know that I have a God who can shake the world. <laughs> That's the confidence that God's word tries to tell us and encourage us to have that faith. Recently, a high school student, a young girl, wrote a short article. And let me share with you what she had written. I'm just going to summarize it. <coughs> and she received the <coughs> first prize that we will be giving in Salt Bank uh, next Sunday as we go to this young teenager. She writes after 1915. Our ancestors desperately left their lives in Armenia and created new realities in the darkest corners of the world. But regardless how far they wandered, they succeeded because we have created new Armenians, new poems, new songs, new dances, new communities, and new organizations. And traditions in the midst of foreign lands. The enemy tried to crush us, our spirit, but we are laughing. They tried to break our bodies, but we are dancing. They tried to silence our voices, but we are singing. They tried to destroy our nation, but we are still living. Wonderful words by a teenager, Armenian girl. My fellow Armenians, friends, young and old, after 103 years later, what is our stand, our response to the challenge to be faithful to our heritage? Once again, let me warn the new generation what the gallows in the torture chamber did not do, could not do. The sword in the grave could not do. Don't allow freedom, luxury, prosperity separate us from Christ. Let us resolve to remain faithful to our heritage and to the Christian faith. I pray and I hope that this would not be another commemoration service, just recalling, remembering. It has to be more than that. It's more than a routine gathering, a routine worship service, but it would be a true renewal, renewal of faith, renewal of commitment to Christ Jesus. Let us pray to God that it will transform our lives, create new ideals in our lives, let Christ be the central figure of our lives. Allow God to fill us with love, kindness, purity, holiness. And may God grant us to be faithful to our heritage and the Christian faith. And God bless the memory of our forefathers. And God bless you.